The broadcast division of the National Farmers Organization presents your monthly tape service for meetings in January 1984. These are highlights of the National Convention at Denver. Jim Ross of KMA, Shenandoah, Iowa, one of the best-known and best-liked farm broadcasters in this country, was an invited guest speaker at the NFO Convention at Denver. He described the NFO frankly, as he has watched it through the years as a reporter and editor in a radio station at Shenandoah, only 50 miles from Corning, Iowa, where NFO's home office is located. Here's Jim Ross being frank about the NFO. The thing that amazes me about the NFO, you know, there's an old saying that a camel is really a horse that was designed by a committee. <laughs> and when you look at the size of your board of directors and you get this many people together and can come up with some good solid answers to get something done, that in itself is a miracle. I can't get along with my wife. At another point, Jim Ross compared NFO to a young student growing up. By 1979, NFO had pretty much finished high school and enrolled in college. At this point in time, Orrin Lee gave up the reins to the new kid on the block, Devon Woodland. And that freshman year for Devon was kind of a tough one. He had danced quite a while, and the time had come to pay the band. I think Mr. Woodland addressed that in his opening remarks earlier in the convention. But to me, as an outsider looking in, it appeared that the NFO was starting to take college very seriously, and an air of business had settled around almost everyone's shoulders. Those very important years of growing up were starting to slip behind, and a new, mature NFO was walking the streets in a business suit. In the next few years, we saw those old debts being quietly worked off. An excellent staff, in my opinion, of some of the brightest marketing minds in the country has been assembled in a little town called Corning, Iowa. I think your staff is tremendous. And then Ross said in conclusion, but please remember that you are the most important people on the face of this earth. Hold your heads up high and be doggone proud that you are a farmer. Your organization offers you a very unique marketing tool. And I urge you to continue on your present path of progress. Jim Ross of KMA Shenandoah, Iowa a replay of one of the most moving moments of the Denver Convention of National Farmers Organization. Devon Woodland gave a short speech after he had been re-elected to his second full four-year term as president. He called for 100% support, and he got prolonged applause. Then his opponent for the presidency, Butch Miller of Minnesota, came to the platform and pledged support. First, we hear the close of Woodland's speech. I wasn't concerned about what would happen to Devon Woodland after this election. What I was concerned about was what would happen to the National Farmers Organization. No man, regardless of whom he might be, can cause this organization to be successful with 50% of your help, 60%, 70, 80, 90, 95. I must have 100% And then Butch Miller of Minnesota comes to the platform to pledge just that kind of support after he had lost to Woodland in the NFO presidential election. And we have to make this organization go. My only effort in running was to build. I believe that before, and I still believe it today. There's only one organization that really stands up for the farmers and ranchers in this country, 
and that can really get them a price. And that's the National Farmers Organization. And I'm as proud as ever to be a member of this organization. And I hope that all of you do stand behind Devon Woodland and the leadership of this organization. And we will win. Thank you. Butch Miller of Minnesota, who now goes back on the national board of NFO as he pledged full support to Devon Woodland as president. I'm talking now to the new vice president of National Farmers. He is Rick Avila, longtime dairy organizer for NFO and board member from Indiana. Avila is a graduate of Purdue University, 1959, with a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. He was a zone chairman when the National Farmers Organization first set up the marketing areas. Rick, congratulations on being elected vice president when the NFO met at Denver. Thank you very much, Phil. What do you perceive to be a contribution that you can make to build NFO? The experience that I believe I bring from working, actually working out with the membership, their needs and their desires, uh, I can relate very closely to, and I hope that in developing the policies that the uh, board establishes and my contribution to that will help in the establishment of programs which the members can accept and relate to. Like, for instance, when you talk to a dairy farmer, you know what kind of a program he would is that what you mean? That's exactly what I mean, Phil. That those, the various relationships that we have and how collective bargaining can work for the dairy farmer at the present time is, is uh, one that I think I can relate to very well. And, of course, as vice president, you'll be speaking to all kinds of uh, parts of agriculture. That's correct. And I also have a background in working with the meat department, and I hope to be able to get filled in on the grain program as well. I'm not as familiar with those programs as I would be, of course, with dairy. Well, congratulations again. I've been talking with Rick Avila, newly elected vice president of the National Farmers Organization, a graduate of Purdue University with a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. And now Roger Slotick, director of the NFO Grain Department, as he addressed the National Convention at Denver. He announced the projected grain blocks in specific terms as to price and shipping point along the Missouri and Mississippi rivers to the Gulf. And what we're proposing is to you, the delegates of this convention, that you allow us, starting tomorrow morning, to go out and start blocking corn for $4.50 at the Gulf, soybeans for $10 at the Gulf, and wheat, ordinary wheat, for $4.75 at Minneapolis, $4.75 at the North Coast, and $4.50 at Kansas City. The most amazing thing is happening out there talking to non-members. Now, non-members only in Illinois of the available grain that was there, we signed 60% of it. In Minnesota, it runs 65% of the available grain that's available. We have talked to, I have talked to personally, and members of my staff have talked to farm leaders from commodity groups, from other groups, national level and state level, and in some cases, they all agree on what we're doing. They agree with it, and in cases, they're going down the road helping us put it together or have made that commitment in some of the states. They said it don't make any difference who does it. We can't stand $2 corn, and that's the general attitude out in the country. Roger Slotick, head of the NFO Grain Department, addressing the Denver Convention. The hog division of the National Farmers Organization has some important news. Here's Merle Sunken, director of the division, to tell you about it. Merle? We have just renegotiated a new contract with John Morrell and Company. In the past, we've had many contracts with John Morrell, but now we are supplying all six of their packing plants. What kind of a contract is it? It's a real good contract for the producers because it's a contract that's based off of formulated markets. It has premiums in it for live hogs. It has a grain yield program built into it and many other benefits for the producers. As you were mentioning, NFO has done business with John Morrell before. What geographical area? Can you describe that? Well, for the producers that will be uh, getting the benefits from this contract will be such areas as South Dakota, 
Minnesota, Nebraska, parts of Iowa, uh, Kansas, Missouri, and as far south as Tennessee. National Farmers does business with other packers besides Morrell. Oh, very definitely. We uh, do business on a daily basis with some 25 to 30 different packing plants each day of the week. We have many other programs with various packers throughout the entire United States, as far west as Portland, Oregon, and as far east as Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, Merle, what would you say is the main advantage in this contract for the producer? I think the main advantage is the producer doesn't go to the marketplace by himself. He goes as a group. He goes with volume because volume is a key to success in bargaining. The packers want a source of supply every day of the week, and we as producers cannot give that to them as individuals. And also this contract will very definitely take out the high gyrations and the fluctuations out of the markets on a daily basis. I've been talking with Merle Sunken, director of the NFO Hog Division. He described a new update of National Farmers' contract with John Morell and Company to supply all six plants. It will benefit hog producers all the way from the Dakotas to Tennessee, with premiums formulated from even flow supply. Ted McCarty, director of operations in the dairy department, announces a draft of NFO dairy members going into Minnesota and Wisconsin to stop the drop in the MW series price. And the drive was announced at mid-December. Ted McCarty. Both the cheese market and the cull cow market overreacted when the dairy bill was signed. This was the result of industry attempting to take advantage of a situation in order to buy cheaper milk and cheaper meat. If industry cannot drive down the MW series price, you will see them increase the price of cheese on the Green Bay Cheese Exchange. The National Farmers Organization has drafted members and staff from all over the United States to put on a massive drive in Minnesota and Wisconsin next week. These members will work with members in Minnesota and Wisconsin to increase the block of NFO milk in these two states. By increasing this block, we'll be able to prevent the MW price series from dropping 50 to 60 cents like the industry wants. Because the MW price series directly affects the price of milk in the entire country, this will put millions of dollars in the pockets of dairy farmers. The National Farmers Organization must take the leadership role in this undertaking because other dairy organizations either don't care or else they want cheap milk for their own plants. We will accept the leadership role in increasing milk prices. On Thursday, December 1st, the date the dairy bill went into effect, another bomb was dropped. The beef processors dropped the price of cull cow from $74 to $68. This past Thursday, cull cows had dropped to $63. This was not caused by an oversupply of cows hitting the market, but was deliberately done by the meat processors so they could make additional profits at the expense of the farmer when he started culling cows in order to reduce milk production. Again, NFO must take the leadership role in the orderly marketing of cull cows so that we will not be at the mercy of the meat processor. We must block these cows and make the packer bid up the price. We're asking all other dairy groups to join with us to orderly market these cull cows. Ted McCarty, Director of Operations for the NFO Dairy Department. This has been your monthly tape information service to be played at meetings in January 1984. It was compiled and edited by Don Mack, head of the NFO Broadcast Division. I'm Phil Allen, and that for this month is something to think about.